welcome in this class today we will discuss next topic of mathematics which will be derivatives of a function particularly for class 12th and uh, for icc boards here in the previous classes i have discussed a lot of concepts and a lot of problems and a lot of formula which is relevant to derivatives of a function and i uh, also discuss some standard formula of a different kinds of a function in this class we have to discuss mainly derivative of a composite function and different kind of complex function composite function means that uh, when you take for actually you have already discussed about for goff in the function chapter but here i have to discuss mainly differentiation for class 12th first of all i want to again repeat your uh, previous concept uh, which has already discussed in class 11th very smartly i think you have already known about what do you mean by derivative of a function <coughs> what do you mean by derivative of a function what does represent the derivative of a function at a particular point and how can you find a derivative that means algorithm of different algorithm algorithm of derivative that means just as a differentiation and i think uh, some uh, with some standard functions you have uh, also checking the uh, which of the following function or which kind of function derivative exist or not exist so, uh, still i want to very smartly discuss i want to what do you mean by derivative derivative means that <coughs> suppose that y equal to fx is a function and actually in the previous class everything is discussed you can see in the previous video i want to only write some standard formula and uh, and some standard clue so that you can relate with class 12th concepts here derivative about derivative i have already told you i want to go for i am trying to go totally forward step forward because i i do not want to discuss con here conceptually because in the previous class everything is uh, discussed very perfectly now i want to just want to tell you what is the meaning of derivative of a function about which i have already told you if you generally find the derivative of any function it represents slope it represents general equation of slope of that function and if you put a particular point uh, in that curve suppose that i want to take a curve here suppose that this is the curve <coughs> of y is equal to fx and you have to find the slope at this at this point x is equal to a in that case you have to find derivative of this function that means y dash is equal to f dash x and if you find derivative of f derivative of this function f dash x and put x is equal to a it will be f dash a which represents the slope of this function at particular point a that's meaning will be <coughs> made by tangent with respect to positive x axis theta this is important i think everything is discussed but still i want to give some uh, basic concept and uh, that will be forgotten by you because in the in this class you will also discuss uh, uh, application of derivatives in which you will very <coughs> devastating way you will discuss uh, maximum minima increasing decreasing function and uh, also find the equation of a general equation of a tangent normal so i want to again tell it now here in this in your syllabus it is mentioned mainly uh, in first of all your in your syllabus he just relates or relate with your syllabus in which he discuss a derivative of some standard function just like uh, say derivative of sin x which will be cos x derivative of cos x which will be minus sin x derivative of sec tan x which will be sec square x derivative of cot x which will be minus cosec square x derivative of cosec x which will be minus cosec x into cot x derivative of uh, sec x which will be sec x into tan x you have to remember all this formula and also discussed about derivative of x to the power n with respect to x which will be n times x to the power n minus 1 also discussed this is the formula <coughs> also you will know derivative of log x which will be 1 upon x i have also discussed derivative of uh, 
derivative of uh, x to the power n log x and derivative of e to the power x with respect to x to the power x. All these formula through, uh, about which I have already explained you. Now, I want to uh, also uh, some basic conception of this topic. I think just like here. Uh, actually, in your syllabus, in first chapter, it is given first principle method and the Vinicio method about which I have already told you in a previous class in the previous video still I want to write only formula I think as you know that suppose that y is equal to fx and you have to find the derivative first of all you have to check that does derivative uh, derivative exists at particular point or not how can you check simply you have to find LHG that means left hand derivative of a left hand derivative of a function of fx at x is equal to a which is simply limits x plus to 0 uh, from left hand side f x minus h minus fx divided by minus h that represents simply LHD and uh, RHD will be left limits h tends to 0 from right hand side which will be fx plus h minus fx divided by h that represents RHD when LHD and RHD both will be same in that case you can say that uh, function fx is derivable at x is equal to a. This is simple way and simple concept which is also known as first principle method or any issue method. Now, I want to, uh, I think you have already, uh, in the previous class I have already discussed only for convenience I have taken it. Now, I want to, uh, I want to take uh, some rules about which I have already also discussed. But still I want to such that you <coughs> divide everything properly which is very important for particular class two because it is first class for you now second will be rule of differentiation rule of differentiation suppose that any function is given as a sum or subtraction form that means y equal to fx plus minus gx in that case how can you find the derivative of y it is very easy simply you have to find dy dx will be dfx with respect to x plus minus derivative of gx with respect to x. This is the simple way through which you can go and you can also solve easily. Similarly, suppose that if any function is in the form of fx into gx, how can you solve? It is also <coughs> simply right here derivative of y with respect to x will be suppose this uh, second only first function this is second function and for solving that means finding derivative of y with respect to x simply take gx outer side and find derivative of fx with respect to x and write in product form plus <coughs> take out fx as outer side and find derivative of gx with respect to x this is your simple rule and this is a product rule and this is an addition or subtraction rule third will be Question two. What is question two? Suppose that if y is equal to fx by gx, any function, how can you find the derivative of uh, that function which is in the form of quotient? In that case, you have to simply write here derivative of y with respect to x, which will be firstly you have to take here gx outer side. That means gx, just like it will be first, it will be second. Gx outer side and write here derivative of fx with respect to x minus minus head fx outer side into derivative of gx with respect to x inner side divided by whole square of the denominator that means gx whole square this is your next <coughs> rule that is quotient rule now in your syllabus actually in the previous class i have discussed also uh, many problems uh, which is based totally on this rule that means addition subtraction rule multiplication rule Question two. Now, I want to take uh, some next concept. Uh, just like here, uh, in the in first in your first chapter, it is given only uh, problems which is based on first principle or ab initio method. You can see here in the first chapter that means eight a exercise eight a in which it is given only you have to solve all problems using first principle. And uh, uh, only one problem is different to you, which is example. Uh, uh, simply it is given as an example still I want to find it uh, suppose that I want to take uh, exercise 8a <coughs> 8a such that you can understand and you will also solve 
Actually, all these problems before eight, everything is very easy, so you can solve. Now I want to discuss only eight a. See in your books, exercise eight a, and problem number eight. Find the gradient function dy dx for each of the following. Gradient function actually gradient is synonym of slope. Gradient and slope both will be same. Now in this problem, it is given that. You have to find the general equation of gradient. Here, currently is given y is equal to 8a. 8a first number. See here. Here, given that y is equal to x minus 7x square. Exercise 8a, it is given that you have to find the uh, gradient function dy dx for the each of the following. Here, y is equal to x minus 7x square. Now, you have to find the gradient. How can you find? It is very easy. Simply you have to find you can write a step. First is write here. We have y is equal to x minus 7 x square. That implies that. Now you have to write here. Differentiating. Differentiating. With respect to x. Differentiating with respect to x. You can take here equation first. With respect to x equation 1. If you differentiate equation 1 with respect to x, in that case it will be dy dx, which will be dx dx. I want to write in very detail, but in next talk, in next problem I will not write it as it. Simply here I want to, for convenience of understanding, I have write here, written here. Uh, if you take here 7 outer and as a product rule and question I have already told you in a previous class if any function is multiplied with a constant then you have to find the derivative of a function y is equal to c into fx where c is a constant in that case during finding derivative of c into fx you have to take simply c outer side as a product and you have to find the derivative of fx with respect to x this is the simple rule about which I have already told. Now here you have to find dx dx minus 7 I have taken as an outer side according to this rule because I have already told you if any function is multiplied by uh, multiplied by a constant and you have to find the derivative of that function then simple rule first of all take out as a product form constant and you have to simply find derivative of that function as a product form and here you get dx dx minus 7 times derivative of x square with respect to x. Now simply dx dx means the derivative of x with respect to x according to you can use formula derivative of x to the power n with respect to x which will be m into x to the power n minus 1 according to this rule it will be <coughs> 1 minus if you couldn't understand here, you can see in the previous video, you will everything, you will understand everything properly. Now, I want to see here, it is the derivative of x square with respect to x, which will be simply 2x. Now, here you will get to 1 minus 14x. This is the gradient equation for this function y equal to x minus 7x square. This is your problem. <coughs> you have not find at particular point slope or gradient. Simply, you have to find the gradient of this curve this equation or this function y equal to x minus 7x square you have to find its gradient which will be as it now suppose that he asks with you you have to find the gradient at particular point x is equal to 2 in that case or y is equal to something any value in that case you have to put x is equal to that value here in that case you have to put x is equal to here and you will get required result now Actually, in this problem, it, uh, it had not asked as it, but uh, uh, this is simply 8 1 and uh, 8 a 1. And uh, now, <coughs> if you try to understand 8 2, it will be same. Now, I want to take 9 1, or you can take 10. I want to take 9 1. Uh, 9 1, I want to write here. Uh, find the gradients of following curves at uh, the points indicated. Find the gradients of following curves at the points indicated just as y is equal to have given that y is equal to x square plus 5x and you have to find the gradient of function y is equal to x square plus 5x at x is equal to that uh, 0, 0 point <coughs> means that this is x x is equal to 0 and this is y is equal to 0. Sometimes the student confused because when you find derivative of this function you will get only in terms of x and so they confuse. 
which value will be put here, put here x is equal to 0 or y, or y is equal to 0. So I want to tell you the C in your problem. What is required here? Sometimes when you find when you will find derivative of when you will find derivative of implicit function. I will discuss in uh, uh, next to next classes. Huh? In that case, you will get you will get the derivative of y. That means derivative of this function in terms of x and y correspondingly or simultaneously. In that case, you have to use x and y both. But here it is not required. Now here this is given y is equal to x square plus 5x, and you have to find the you have to find the slope of this function at this, at this point or gradient of this function at this point. How can you find it? It is very easy. Simply find it. I, I do not like to write as it is. Simply I want to go <coughs> because there is no enough space. Can you write the derivative of this function dy dx is equal to after differentiating this function you will get 2x plus 5. Now you have to put x is equal to 0, 0. Actually here x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. But you have to utilize only x is equal to 0. Because uh, all the time the gradient equation only x is present. So, or in other words, you can say that obtain the gradient equation or gradient function in terms of x only. So you have to use for here only 0, which will be x is equal to 0. This term x is equal to 0. This is y. Now you have to put and you can write at x is equal to 0 dy dx will be 2 into 0 plus 5, which will be 5, which is your required gradient at x is equal to 0, 0 of a function y is equal to x square plus 5. Have you understood? Now, I think you can solve 8a exercise 8a first, that means exercise 8a, 8, 1 and 2 and 9. 9, 1, this is 9, 1 and this is 8, 1. <coughs> now, I think everything is very easy for exercise 8a. Now I want to go next topic. <coughs> next topic will be how can you find derivative of composite function? I think in previous classes you uh, you have discussed or uh, in function topic which are in class that means exercise one or two in your books you can see. Uh, first topic will be relation and second topic will be in your books function uh, if you have discussed or you have learned about function then it becomes more easier suppose that what do you mean by composition of function uh, i want to simply explain here suppose that here fx is equal to sin x and gx is equal to x square fx is equal to sin x and gx is equal to x square in proper and you have to, I want to I want to take here simply uh, here fx is equal to sin x and gx is equal to x square and you have to find the fog. And in that case, fog of will be if it is defined, if you have you can write if fog and bob defined. Because every in each case it is not defined. So I want to take here uh, if fog and bob defined, in that case fog of x comma means that f of g of x, it is rather f of g of x f of g of x means that f here this is gx what is the value of gx x square x square here i have written as i have already told you fog x means that or fog means f of g of x which will be f of x square and f of x square what is the meaning of f of x square f of x square means that you have to replace in fx x by x square. Try to care in my words. fx square means that you have to replace in fx x by x square. That means if you see fx, here fx is equal to what? Sign x. And f in fx here fx is equal to sin x, you have to find x square, f x square means that you have to simply replace x by x square and if you replace x, x by x square, you will get f x square, finally x is replaced by sin x square, that means you will get sin x square. This is your fog of x and similarly I think you can also find of x, similarly it will be g of f of x g of f of x which will be g of here fx equal to sin x 
here f x is equal to sin x. Now here it is given that g of <coughs> it is g of sin x. G of sin x. Here what does what does it tell you? It tells you you have to replace x in g x by sin x. Here it is given that g x is equal to x square. Here it is given that g x is equal to x square and you have to find g sin x. g sin x. What is the meaning of it? Simply you have to replace x. Simply you have to replace this x by sin x. By sin x means that it will be x square. That means x is replaced by sin x which will be sin x square which will be sin square. This is your prog x and gof x. I do not like to discuss it because it is your topic of function still i want to tell you this is your frog x and gof x that, that means you have to find derivative of this kind of function this kind of function how can you find because there is no any formula there is no any formula sometimes you can solve it. suppose that you have to find sin square x you will definitely tell me sir i can solve this problem without without using any problem according to product rule using product rule how because sin square x can be written as sin x into sin x and uh, by supposing a question first and uh, first function and second function and applying product to you can also find but how can you find problem? derivative of this function this derivative of this function can be solved by first principle or initial method but it becomes more complex complicated in that case i will give you some standard methods some standard uh, procedures through which you can find uh, you can find derivative of composite function this represents composite function now i want to take you i want to take some standard problems uh, through which i will discuss how can you find derivative of a composite function suppose that here it is given that y is equal to f of g of x that means for x which represents f of g of x f of g of x this is inner function this is inner function this is outer function. Suppose that this is f of g of x. This is f of g of x. And you have to find the derivative of this function. How can you find? This is outer function. This is inner function. If you wish, you can write outer function. This is inner function. Just For convenience, I, have to, uh, I want to write it. Otherwise, yeah, function. Yeah, yeah, function. Give me now. You have one limit that I will give you. Okay. I need okay. to solve this problem. Simply, first of all, I want to tell you. Otherwise, not me. No, there is any meaning of that function. There, there are two ways. So one way, what is the solution I have taken? Suppose it y is equal to four x, and this. you have you want to find the derivative of it. Suppose that this is equation first. Now I want to write here differentiating equation first with respect to x. In that means you have to find dy dx that implies that implies that uh, dy dx is equal to derivative of fog of x. You can write or I want to write here it derivative of f of g of x. Have you understood with respect to x? I have already told you <laughs> this is your standard form. Now I want to tell you how can you differentiate it. Because logically there is no any formula to differentiate it. Now, first of all, first of all, I want to tell you here it is f of g of x. F is function of which function? Because when you see right here f x in that means f is function of x. If you write here f y means that f is function of y. If you write here f z it means f is function of z. So, can I write, uh, can you tell me f is a function of which function? gx. gx. So, first of all, because if f, f is a function of x, in that case, you differentiate fx with respect to x. So, here you see, you see f is a function of gx. So, f should be differentiated firstly with respect to which function? gx. But here there is no gx. In that case, how can we proceed? In that case, how can we proceed? There is simple way, simply write here. Can we take here, forcefully, 
dx. Can we take here force dx? If you take force dx in denominator, then you have to also take dx in denominator because that it will it becomes balanced. Now can I write here the derivative of dx with this? Now it is x. Okay, x. Can I write here? dx is written here. Now if you say f is a function of dx, so f is a function of dx, so f can be differentiated with respect to dx, so it will be f dash dx into, now if you see here, this is dx, that means g is a function of x, so it can be differentiated with respect to x and it will be g dash x. I think you understand. <coughs> And this is the complete function. Similarly, you can also understand derivative of g of x. And in that case, it will be g of f of x. That implies that y dash is equal to what? Derivative of g dash f x into uh, f dash x. This is your derivative of this function. Now, this is your com uh, derivative of complete function. I think you understand very well. <coughs> and uh, I want to take some problems, uh, that means some uh, questions of it and uh, in once you couldn't understand how we solve all these problems. <coughs> but when you solve 10 to 15 problems, you will automatically understand everything properly. Now I want to take some examples. And I want to also, uh, I will also give you some other concepts through which you can understand very easily because it is a standard method, that means a standard way through which I have discussed. But here I will also give you some different concepts during solving how do you check a, a, this, that means f is function of gx, g is function of x, it becomes more complicated during solving. So I will uh, give you some standard problems, uh, uh, standard procedures. Take example one. Differentiate example one. It is given that differentiate if y is equal to suppose that I have taken y. Y is equal to sine five x square minus three x square. Y is equal to sine five x square minus three x plus four. Have you understood? It is given that sine five x square minus three x plus four. In that case. I want to tell you again, suppose that there is a function g of f of h of uh, p of x and you have to differentiate this function and you have to differentiate this function, then how can you differentiate? Simply, if you, firstly you have to differentiate g with respect to which function? Hold this function. Again, you have to differentiate f with uh, in which, uh, which respect to function? This function. In the uh, next way, uh, you have to differentiate as with respect to which function? Px. And finally, you have to differentiate p with respect to x. This is the way through which you will proceed. Now, I want to solve this problem because this is a composite function. And there is no any formula through which you can easily find using a product rule, quotient rule, or addition or subtraction rule. Completely, you have to discuss here. Completely, you have to discuss or I use only composite function concept. I think you can also uh, go through a composite function function, but I, I want to give you some uh, simple logic through which you can understand and always apply this rule as I have discussed. We have y is equal to sine 5x square minus 3x plus 4 and he says, it says according to problem, it says you have to differentiate this function with respect to x. In this problem it has told you, you have to differentiate this function with respect to x. How can you solve? It is very easy. Simply, here y is equal to sine 5x square minus 3x plus 4. You can write differentiate 
डिफरेंट सेटिंग इक्वेशन फर्स्ट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स वेन यू डिफरेंशिएट इक्वेशन फर्स्ट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स इन दैट केस यू विल गेट डी वाई डी एक्स विच विल बी डेरेवेटिव ऑफ साइन फाइव एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस थ्री एक्स प्लस फोर डी एक्स हैव यू अंडरस्टूड डेरेवेटिव ऑफ दिस फंक्शन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू अकॉर्डिंग टू क्वेश्चन एज इट हैज टोल्ड यू यू हैव टू डिफरेंशिएट दिस फंक्शन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स आई हैव रिटर्न Now I want to tell you, <coughs> if you think about formula, this is sine function, sine some angle. Now I want to tell you, sine theta is differentiated with respect to only which function theta. If there is theta, then only it is differentiated with respect to theta. Here. If you if you want if you want to remember this formula, sine theta is only differentiated with respect to theta. Then it will be cos theta. But here it is in place of theta. It is five x square minus three x plus four. How can you proceed? Means that uh, there should be distance. There should be distance because sine theta is differentiated with respect to theta. In that case, it will be cos theta. So I want to write one step again. Carefully, eh? derivative of sine five x square minus three x plus four. Here I have suppose this angle is theta. In that case, sine theta is differentiated with respect to only theta. So there should be theta. That means there should be five x square minus three x plus four. There should be five x square minus three x plus four. Why? Because sine theta is differentiated with respect to only theta. Or sine x. If suppose that there is sine x, then you can tell me sine x is only differentiated with respect to x. You think because I have not told you anything, only use formula. So I have used. Uh, I am using here formula. Sine theta. Suppose that this angle is theta. In that case, because because this is theta. In that case, theta is only differentiated with respect to. And sine theta is only differentiated with respect to theta, so I have taken here this angle. Now, for balance, definitely it should be also in above. It should be also in above. So I want to take derivative of this term. That means same as it, five x square minus three x plus four. But if you see in your problem, there should be also dx. Why? Because dx is also present in under the. Earlier dx is also present in the denominator part. In that case, we have to also take dx such that your next x step do not alter or you do not change. Now, if you care <coughs> careful again, <coughs> everything is very easy. Only <coughs> you will, when you solve yourself more than two or ten times, that means more than ten problems, you will automatically understand everything. I want to again repeat it. Here this this function. Here sine five x square minus three x plus four. I think I have already told you there is no any direct rule or direct formula uh, by using you can directly find. So <coughs> try to understand <coughs> my uh, my way. Here derivative of sine five x square minus three x plus four. Now. Here function is sine five x square minus three x plus four. Now this is suppose that this angle is theta. In that case, if you see your formula, sine x is only differentiated uh, when it is only differentiated with respect to x, then it becomes cos x. So there, if you suppose this angle is theta, it becomes sine theta. In that case, there it will it should also theta. In that case, sine theta with respect derivative of sine theta uh, with respect to theta will be cos theta. You can easily find. So I have taken this here. For suppose that this is theta, in that case there should be also theta. Then in that then in that case it becomes cos theta. And for balancing it, why? What is the meaning of balance? Because I have forcefully taken here this term. There is no any term in this term. In this term, in this part, there is no five x square minus three x plus four in denominator. I have taken here forcefully. So I have to also take in denominator such so that it becomes balances. Now here this is a Linear function, quadratic function, sometimes are as a product function, uh, product of quotient and 
f to the power m for this is also same as this is going to be function i think it can be differentiated with respect to x it can be differentiated with respect to x and dx i have not taken dx outer side unfortunately this is already present here this term is balanced by me have you understood now we have to find simple answer it is derivative of suppose that this angle is theta this is theta Five x square minus three x plus four is theta. In that case, sine theta. This will be also theta. Sine theta is differentiated with respect to theta. It will be cos theta. So it should be cos five x square minus three x plus four into this is. I think you understand. Now it is a simple polynomial five x square minus three x plus four. Now you have to find derivative of this function. It is very easy. Simply. 5 into derivative of x square will be 2x, so 5 into 2x will be 10x plus derivative of uh, minus 3x that is minus 3 into derivative of x with respect to x will be 1 plus derivative of 4 which will be constant as you know that derivative of constant function will be 0, so ignore it and this is your required answer. I think you understand very easily. Now uh, I want to take next question for you and I always <coughs> suggest you when you solve problems take all formula about which I have already discussed in the uh, previous video try to write in a proper paper and take near to yourself such that during solving problems my clue and uh, my procedure easily understand next problem will be uh, suppose that there is second problem, example second, in which given that y is equal to root under sin x and you have to find dy dx. What is the value of dy dx? You have to find dy dx. How can you find dy dx? It is as very easy. Still, I want to discuss with you. Actually, all those problems can also solved by composite function, but I do not like to discuss by composite function because. Uh, using composite function because it becomes more complicated for you and because it is the suppose that this is also a composite function but it is not such easy you can easily find fx and gx separately so i will suggest my logics and my procedures through which you can solve easily you can write we have i do not like always we have differentiating with respect to x but i will suggest you because in your examination always step marking is you it is so i always suggest you try to use right each step we have y is equal to root under sin x this is your root under sin x differentiating with respect to x with respect to x right here differentiating y you are suppose that equation but right here differentiating equation first with respect to x in that case you will get dy dx is equal to derivative of roots root under sin x with respect to x I think you understand very well. Now I want to again explain it properly. Any formula, any formula which is relevant to root about which I have already classes uh, in it, about which I have already discussed in previous classes. Yes. I think I have already told you derivative of root under x with respect to x will be 1 upon 2 root under x. 1 upon 2 root under x. This is outer 2, do not take here. 1 upon 2 into root under x. 1 upon 2 root x. This is your formula. Now I want to tell you if you see this formula, root x root x in inner portion of x is only differentiated with respect to x. That means this x is taken outer side. At the denominator, but uh, I do not like to. Uh, I do. Uh, I always suggest this is not in ratio, but uh, here for convenience, I, I want to tell you derivative of root x with respect to x, which will be 1 upon 2 into root under x, means that if any function in root, in any function in root, only differentiated with respect to that term which lies in root that means only x in that case it becomes 1 upon 2 root under x but 
Here, in the root, there is a sine x, but it is differentiated with respect to x. So, it is a, it can't be solved. So, now, again, we take force with any function as a denominator, in a denominator. Suppose that I want to tell you as a convenience, suppose that sine x is equal to p. Or theta, suppose that sine x is equal to theta, do not take theta. Suppose that sine x is equal to p. Then it becomes d root under p. Then you will tell me, sir, it can be differentiated only with respect to p. And in that case, it will be 1 upon 2 root p. There is same logic here. Now I want to write here that logic which will be derivative. It, uh, it can be differentiated with respect to uh, sin x firstly. And you know that sin x is taken here forcefully. So for balancing, you have to also take in numerator. And I have left here dx, so you have to also write here. Now, if you care, both will be same. How? Because both terms will be cancelled, only it remains this term. I want to again tell you this is not in ratio, so do not think I have cancelled this term, this term. This is wrong way, only for convenience I want to tell you. Now, if you see here, suppose that this term is equal to p, that means sin x is equal to p. In that case, root under p with respect to p, which will be 1 upon 2 root under p. So, it will be. 1 upon 2 root under p where p is equal to sin x so can you write here sin x now this is derivative of sin x with respect to x which will be cos x because it can be differentiated with respect to x directly using formula i think you understood properly everything is very easy <coughs> now i want to take some next questions uh, uh, first i want to take uh, so I have told you many times or uh, try to write all formula near to, in a page and take near to you such that during solving you can understand what do I want to tell you. Have you understood? Now I want to take next problems for Next problem will be See here, uh, again next one, derivative of ax square plus bx plus c <coughs> to the power n with respect to x. You have to find, one minute wait. Now, see here. You have to find derivative of this function. Simply, uh, it is given in your, in your books in the first example, and uh, it tells you you have to find derivative of this function. How can you find? There is simple procedure. First of all, <coughs> is there any formula? Is there any formula using it you can directly find? No. But uh, I have told you a formula which is as it. I think it is just like extreme power. Where any any real number? Now, if this function that means here n is this function is x, that means if it, it will be single term, then it can be differentiated with respect to. But uh, this is very big term. So how can you differentiate? And I have already told you, x to the power n is only differentiated with respect to x. Here, in place of x, so whole term is present. So, firstly, whole this term, that means whole expression, x square plus bx plus c whole to the power n, is differentiated with respect to x square plus bx plus c. Why? Because x to the power n is differentiated with respect to x only. So, can I write here? Derivative of ax square plus bx plus c with respect to n, with respect to ax square plus bx plus c into. Next term, as in this question, this term is not present. So I have taken here forcefully. So now you have to take also in numerator. Can I write here derivative of x square plus bx plus c? And as you know that this term can be differentiated directly with respect to x. And 
dx is also present here because if you, you leave dx in that case it unbalances so now i have taken here dx now i want to take here dx in that case the uh, derivative of x square plus dx plus c can be differ uh, differentiated with respect to x equally and this is also now derivative of x square plus bx plus c whole to the power n with respect to x square plus bx plus c will be what as i have already told you derivative of x to the power n with respect to x will be n into x to the power n minus one so suppose your distance is equal to y or p you can tell me p in that case it will be p to the power n and derivative of p to the power n with respect to p will be what n into p to the power n minus 1 so it will be n times ax square plus bx plus c whole to the power n minus 1 into derivative of this term which will be what 2ax because ax square where a b c are constants so i have taken here a common and derivative of x square will be 2x so it will be 2ax plus derivative of bx here b is a constant so you can take outer side and derivative of x with respect to x will be 1 so it will be 2x plus b which is your required answer of this problem now again i want to take <coughs> next problem for you uh, which as it y is equal to root other 1 plus x square it is also very easy similarly you can uh, go second i want to write here y is equal to root other 1 plus x square how can you solve it this is also very easy simply can i i want to write here dy dx is equal to derivative of root other 1 plus x square with respect to x now if you see here again this is root this is root and i have already told you root x is only differentiated, differentiated with respect to x which will be 1 upon 2 root under x this is single term x uh, and differentiated with respect to x here if you treat this term as single term then it becomes 4 plus x square so hold this function firstly differentiated with respect to 1 plus x square in that case it becomes root uh, derivative of 1 plus x square with respect to 1 plus x square and again as you know that this term has taken forcefully so now i have also to take in numerator the derivative of 1 plus x square with respect to x thereafter finally you can write derivative of root x with respect to x will be 1 upon 2 root x so it will be 1 upon 2 root under 1 plus x square into derivative of 1 plus x square derivative of 1 plus x square which will be 2x which will be 2x 2 to cancel and finally you will get x by root under 1 plus x square which is your required answer have you understood i think you understand very well now i want to take again next problem for you at least uh, 8 to 10 problems i will discuss thereafter i will go next concept in your, that becomes very easily you can proceed uh, next pattern I want to discuss third will be derivative of root under 4x cube plus 6x you have to find derivative of this function this is also easy. How can you find? This is in which form? Root x form. Now utilize this formula. Derivative of root x only, that means root x is only differentiated with respect to x. That means there should be single term in a root and that uh, and different it is it is differentiated with respect to only that single term with respect to. Now can I write here derivative of root under 4x cube plus sec x with respect to which term? Single term, single term. You have to treat this term only single term. That means 4x cube plus sec x. And you know that this part, this term is not present in its denominator. So I have taken here firstly. Now I want to balance it. For balancing, now I have to write here in the numerator of it. So it will be derivative of 4x cube plus sec x. Now I want to tell you again, can you differentiate directly? <coughs> yes, it can be differentiated. So can I take here the dx? And I have not taken here dx forcefully uh, because dx is already present in this denominator. So I have taken here, and now if you see here, the, this term, this term, 
Penicillin is there and finally you will get blister. Now, can you tell me derivative of this root under this term? Root under this term will be what? Root under this term. That means suppose that this is P. In that case, it becomes derivative of P with respect to P, which will be 1 upon 2 root under P. So, can you write here 1 upon 2 root under uh, 4x cube plus sec x? This 4x cube plus sec x will be what? P. And so, now I want to differentiate it. What will be the derivative of 4x cube? As in class 11, you will not try to solve very uh, right to each and every step. Sometimes you have to go, you can jump. Now I want to write 4 into derivative of x to the power 3 will be what? 3x square, 4 into 3x square, which will be 12x square plus derivative of sec x with respect to x, which will be sec x into 10x, which will be sec x into 10x, which is your required answer. I think you understand very easy. Now, I want to take again a very easy problem for you, uh, which will be Example 4 Derivative of ten x plus x to the power 3 whole to the power minus 5 and you have to differentiate and you have to differentiate. Sometimes it is also given in uh, actually I think you can write this term as uh, this is this can be also written as 1 upon 10x plus x to the power 3 whole to the power 5. This term can be written as it. So, in some problem, it is as it, sometimes it is written as it. So, I will suggest when any problem as written it, that means 1 upon some, uh, sometimes whole to the power some power, that means natural number or any real number, in that case, first of all, taking numerator by conversing its power. If there is positive, then it, when it goes in numerator, it becomes negative. When this exponent will be negative in denominator, then when it goes in numerator, it becomes a positive. So I want to tell you, first of all, try to understand this. <coughs> now, if you if you understand this fact, now here, here now see here, in which formula standard form it meets, it totally meets this formula derivative of x to the power is with respect to x where x is whole term you can i want to write capital x here capital x is whole term in that case you can differentiate all these things now can i write here derivative of 10x plus x to the power 3 whole to the power minus 5 with respect to which 10x plus x to the power 3 and you have seen this term is in denominator and I have taken here forcefully it is not present in this problem so now you have to balance it also can I write here derivative of 10x plus x to the power 3 now if you see each term can be differentiated by uh, differentiated with respect to x directly so I want to write here dx but this dx is not taken forcefully this is present under the in upper terms that means in denominator so now i want to write direct its answer now from here please go there derivative of 10x plus x to the power 3 with respect to minus uh, sorry 10x plus x to the power 3 whole to the power minus 5 with respect to 10x plus x to the power 3 suppose that this term is y and this term is y, then it becomes also y. In that case, it becomes derivative of y to the power minus 5 with respect to y. Derivative of y to the power minus 5 with respect to y. And derivative of y, derivative of y to the power 5, minus 5 with respect to y will be what? Minus 5 into y to the power minus 6. Why? Because minus 5, according to the formula, n into x to the power m, n minus 1, which will be minus 5 into y to the power minus 5 minus 1. So it will be minus 6. So can I write here? minus 5 into 10x plus x to the power 3 minus 6 into derivative of 10x will be what? 6 square x 
خلاص ده اللي بقى اكشلي بقى مرتين يقول لي بقى 3x سكوير this is your required answer i think understand very well now in your books next terms is also given when function is given in more than two forms more than when function is composited using more than two terms using more than two functions in that case how can you solve always go three uh, go through this concept always go through this concept then you can solve easily each and every problem now uh, if you see in your books i want to write again how can you solve it <coughs> I want to write a next problem when function is composited by more than two functions. <coughs> If you, I see in your books. simple question thereafter i will go next to uh, pattern problems uh, which will be derivative of 1 upon i think sometimes a student can feel about it so i want to discuss and so it sin x plus x to the power 3 minus 8 with respect to x how can you find it it is also very easy see here I have already told you when any function, any terms in uh, when any function is as it, uh, is as it, try to take x firstly in numerator, x to the power minus n, uh, or any terms in there may be m. In that case, you have to take here minus n. <coughs> here there is no any power, so I want to take here one. Now tell you right, derivative of uh, sin x plus x to the power three minus eight whole to the power minus one. Can I write it? Now, if you see, it is just as x to the power n form, where n is minus one, minus one. Now you know that derivative of x to the power n only differentiated with respect to x. So can I write it? Derivative of sin x plus x to the power three minus eight whole to the power minus one with respect to sin x plus x to the power three minus eight. Can you write it? And two, derivative of sin x plus x cube. Minus eight with respect to x. I think you understand. Now, if you understand it, it will be. See here. According to formula, I have already told you derivative of x to the power n with respect to n will be n into x to the power n minus one. Now, it should be what minus one into minus one. n minus one minus one minus one, which will be minus two. Here, n is equal to minus one. And if you subtract one minus two. In minus one, it will be minus two. Now, can you write here? It will be sine x plus x cube minus eight whole to the power minus two into. It should be uh, at the multiplication. I have written it. So derivative of sine x, which will be cos x plus derivative of x cube, which will be three x square, and derivative of minus eight, that will be derivative of constant function, which will be always zero. So I have. Where is it? Now. I want to take a different concept problems totally, but I have uh, told you again. Uh, only try to go according to my concept. Do not bother using any other or your books methods. Have you understood? Next problem. See here. Suppose that there is given y is equal to cos sine root x. Y is equal to cos sine root x, and you have to differentiate y is equal to cos sine root x with respect to x. In that case, how can you differentiate it? As in previous method, you have to again write. We have 
y is equal to cos sin root under x. You can write here again. Differentiating equation first with respect to x. With respect to x. Differentiate equation first with respect to x. Suppose this is equation first. I have a right here, I have written here. With respect to x, means that as in, in your problem it is also told, it has also told you you have to differentiate with respect to x. So be careful. Sometimes you can it may ask to you with respect to another function. So always try to understand in this problem it is given that you have to differentiate given function with respect to x. So I have written here dy dx will be derivative of cos. <coughs> with respect to x as i have told you here outer function is what cos what outer function is what cos means that you have to differentiate cos now if you see remains terms you will get actually i have already told you cos is if i go in formula then you will see derivative of cos x only differentiated with respect to x. But here derivative of cos sin root x is differentiated with respect to x. That means it is engaged to formula. Definitely, I have to first of all, it should be theta. Suppose that this is y. Suppose that this is y. If this is y, then it becomes always a start from outer side. If this is cos, then there should be something uh, sometimes uh, with respect to which we can differentiate. That means suppose that this is theta, then you can differentiate cos theta with respect to theta. Suppose that this is y, then cos y can be differentiated with respect to y. Now, if you see this is psi cos some terms. So if suppose that this is theta, then cos theta is differentiated with respect to theta, which will be minus theta, psi theta. But there is no uh, theta. So now write here derivative of cos root sorry uh, cos sine root x firstly with respect to which term sine root x sine root x why have i have taken here sine root x because cos cos theta suppose that this is theta in that case cos theta is differentiated with respect to only theta as i i have chosen uh, theta is sine root x in that case you have to as you here sine theta uh, uh, theta as theta sine root x now i want to again tell you there is no any term in denominator of the ever terms so you have to balance as well now i want to balance sine root x now i want to again tell you can you differentiate sine root x with respect to x no no, because I have already told you sin x, sin x is only with respect to x differentiated that its answer will be cos x. So there should be only x, but there is given root x. So suppose that this is y. In that case, it will be sin y. Then sin y is differentiated only with respect to y. That means only with respect to y. In that case, it becomes y. I have understood. That means there should be again sine y. It is only differentiated with respect to y. Here y is equal to what? Root under x. So you have to differentiate sine root under x with respect to root under x. Now, as you know that this is also not present in the denominator of it. So I want to take again it in above. That means in numerator part. And you have to take, can you differentiate root x with respect to x? Yes, root x can be differentiated with respect to x. If you see here, this term is taken here, this term is taken here, this term is, that means this term is taken here. That's why I, uh, sometimes I also tell about it, this is chain rule method. This is chain rule method. So I always suggest, how can you differentiate it? Always go through formula. Always go through formula. Uh, as you know that outer function is cos. Cos is, if you, uh, there are um, remains term, if you remove cos, the remains term is this term. Suppose this, this term is theta, in that case it becomes cos theta. Cos theta is differentiated only with respect to theta, where theta is sine root x. So I have taken here sine root x. 
again if i see here i have taken here this term in numerator forcefully so again i have to take in numerator it sin root x now if i take sin root x then i i want to differentiate it with respect to x but i couldn't differentiate with respect to x why because it is sin root x but i know only formula sin x with respect to x derivative of sin x with respect to x in that case i have suppose that this term is theta again if this term is theta in that case it becomes sin theta then sin theta is only differentiated with respect to theta then in, the, in that case it becomes d theta so it becomes d sin theta d theta d sin theta d theta and that means i have taken again for three this term root x and root x is here so i have taken again numerator in numerator root x with respect root x and differentiated with respect to up to which may there are, it may be long chance not merely three terms it may be long terms so be careful about it now if you see this term this term cancel don't cancel only i want to tell you does it balance or not this this term this term cancel this term this term cancel only remains what cos d is cos sin root x dx which is also present in first line so be careful about it also sometimes a student uh, forces taken more than two uh, that terms which is not required so always try to also uh, also check uh, only this term and this term should remain in your question otherwise if you take any terms then you have to also uh, cancel by <coughs> taking numerator denominator alternatively so here i have written cos sin root x sin with respect to sin root x how i have already explained it sin root x with respect to root x root x with respect to x now i want to write its answer Can I repeat? Suppose that this is theta. In that case, this is also theta because sine root x, sine root x, both will be same. In that case, derivative of cos theta with respect to sine theta, with respect to uh, derivative of cos theta with respect to theta will be what? Minus sine theta theta, where theta is sine root x. I think you understand. Again, derivative. Suppose that root x is again theta. If root, I take everything uh, for convenience. Do not understand. Uh, uh, suppose many times sine theta y. You can orally suppose any terms. Uh, here suppose root x is theta. In that case, it becomes sine theta. If you take this, this becomes sine theta. Here root x is theta, so it becomes also theta. So in that case, sine theta differentiated with respect to theta, which will be cos theta. So it will be cos root x into derivative of root x with respect to x with what? Which will be one upon two root x. Which is your required answer? I think you understand. And uh, today I think it becomes one hundred. One hour and eight minutes. So, and uh, try to solve the next problems of your books. And also, if you wish, you can solve it in your exercise. In next class, I will discuss next problems and different kinds of problems. In next class, I will discuss. I today I have only give you idea how can you differentiate using chain rule, inner outer concept, or composite function. How can you differentiate? Mainly, I have. today i have discussed about differentiation derivatives of a composite function in very detail by taking more uh, more than that means uh, five to six problems and uh, so divide in previous class sub concepts i think you can solve 8b 8b 1 2 3 4 that means uh, up to 25 sorry uh, up to 20 what you can solve uh, 8b you can solve up to 20 Two, and I will discuss <coughs> in next class next type of problem. I think in next class eight B will be completed, and uh, then I will discuss again derivative of some trigonometric function, which is also very important for you. Uh, okay, thank you. In next class I will again meet you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.